The reason for that being is, is that you have a little bit of latitude to adjust the claws left and right. Gives you a little bit of fine tuning capability. This is an adjustable butt plate hook. This adjust this um oh no I didn't do it on this one. This normally does adjust a little bit left and right, but this one doesn't. What it does is it it adjusts back and forth to give you the ultimate um, butt length. But these adjust to the width of your shoulder and here. Under our rules, you can't have it over the shoulder. It can only be up to the shoulder. This piece here, which this piece fits on, is your forward hand grip. This again is all adjustable, left and right, to get to give you the right fill, relaxed fill. Okay. This piece is for stabilizers. I haven't made them yet. As you can see, the front mounting is held in by four 24, 10 24 Allen screws. The front stirrup, which will also hold the front sight. It's screwed straight into the wood. And it's a thread about that long. The stock and the stirrup are threaded? Yeah. Yeah, there's a fine thread on here, half inch thread on here, and it goes into about there. So it gives it open, and then I lock it with a screw there. This is the same. This is screwed directly into the stock. Okay, now if we turn it over, we have two blocks of aluminum. They're bolted from the other side of the stock and they are split with a groove about a quarter inch wide right up to here. Obviously with a half inch hole going through there and when you screw up from the other side it locks this in place. This is not fixed on right now because um, I have to wait till these are anodized before I glue it into place. The same with this. And the same with this one. This also is cut up to about there. That's right through. So when you tighten up on the screw, it lock, locks it solid into place. Once I've done all the machining that I need to do on the stock, I then draw out my shape and cut it out. And I then shape it by hand to what I want. Because after that I can do basically whatever I want to do to it. Now your sights are this. This this is the sight rig for this particular bow. Fits on that so. Now I've got an Anschutz target sight on there. I think I dropped a little bit of a boo boo on this on the sight mounting. I think I'll make this too thin. It doesn't look quite right. So I may have to make it again. Which is no big deal. Okay, now, the reason why I say I think I've got this boo boo is. And I'm hoping it's not going to ping when you shoot it, because vibration goes through the bow, right? 
Incidentally, this is fitted before I cut the stock shape paint. This is one other thing I fit on. Okay, this knob here is for stringing the crossbow. This, the bracing string fits right there so that I can put my shooting string on. This knob mm -hmm. is threaded and I can adjust it so that I can decrease and increase the pressure on the bolt finger. And this is a, an Anschutz match target side, rear side. Obviously it slides up and down. It'll be fitted with a micrometer thread and it bolts to bracket both sides. In actual fact, both sides. This, the, the globe fits in there and goes back and forth. You see, Ray, this is how I mount it in the front. Two th uh, three-eighth Allen screws with washer. Right through the stock into the block. Now, that hole has to be larger than the diameter of the bolt. Not a dead fit. If you make it a dead fit, it will split the prod. Because what it does is the action of the prod bending back and forward acts like a pivot. And it will split. Pull the bowstring back and put it into the latch. You're bending the limbs back, obviously. That just gives you your power. When you release the prod, the string goes forward, the limbs then go forward. This part bends a lot more forward. It's called the jerk strain. And the jerk strain is normally five times greater than the prod weight. And in this case, this prod is a 95 pound prod at 14.5 inches. That's 14 inches, 14 and a half inches from the belly of the butt prod to the ears of the latch. The string usually sits roughly there. Okay. You then, when you cock the bow, it obviously comes back to here. When you release it, the string comes obviously forward, and it goes to about there, which means the prod limbs are bending in the opposite direction to what they are now. That is what's called jerk strain. That is what does damage. If you if if your prod string breaks, that's normally where it will go because of it. Okay, the jerk strain is what does damage in crossbow. Because like I said, it is normally five times greater than the prod weight. So this is a 95 pound bow. So let's call it 100 pounds for all intents and purposes. So your jerk strain is 500 pounds. So that's a 500 pound jerk strain. That's what does your damage on a crossbow. It's not pulling the bow back. It's not the actual release. It's when it stops. That's where the damage occurs. If there's going to be any damage. This is why you have to make sure that everything is dead smooth. Your knocks and your trigger mechanism.